Oh, happy Sunday, happy Sunday to you. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. I just want to take a moment just to acknowledge all the fathers. Uh, we want to wish you a happy Father's Day. We want to wish the stepfathers, the uncles, the grandfathers, the friends, the mentors. You know, those that stand in the gap for the fathers that are not showing up for their children. We thank you for loving the children, for doing what you're supposed to do. We're not giving you an special award for it, for standing up and being all right and being good men. We just want to thank you and acknowledge you and let you know that you are appreciated. And God, we just thank you today. So you have yourself a special, blessed, and happy, happy Father's Day. I hope you're doing something special, and I hope the people in your life are appreciating and acknowledging you. But if you, they're not, just let you know that you are appreciated and, you, and our children need you. We need you. Thank you. Anyway, let me see my grace and I'll tell y'all what I got. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for another Sunday coming in, Lord. We thank you for blessing us to see another Father's Day, Lord, for giving us a chance to acknowledge those fathers who do what they're supposed to do, God. We ask you, Lord God, to touch those who have lost their fathers, Lord God, who are missing their fathers, their fathers are absentee, Lord, because they don't have a choice right now, but they still love their children, Lord, those that are in jail right now. Lord, we still thank you, Lord. Touch them, Lord, and, and celebrate them. Those fathers who are in the military and who are away, Lord God, for whatever reason, Lord, we ask you, God, just to touch them, Lord God, and let them know that they are appreciated. Their hard work and whatever they got, their works may travel. It is not in vain, Lord God. They're doing what they need to do to provide for their family and their children, Lord. We thank you. We ask you to touch those who doesn't have a heart for their kids, who are not standing up, being doing what they're supposed to do. Lord, we thank you for those men, too, because without them, those children wouldn't be here. But, Lord, we ask you to touch, move, and change their hearts to realize and know no matter what age those children are, they still need them in their lives, Lord God, and hope that they can, as long as they're still here, they have another chance to get it right, to make a right decision for their children, Lord. We just thank you right now, Lord God. We ask you to bless those men who may be stressed and worried about how they're going to make ends meet for their families. We ask you just to touch them right now and help them to see a way and make a way, Lord God. We ask you just to bless right now, God. Thank you for the food we're about to receive, for the nourishing of our body. In Christ's name, amen. Amen, amen. Y'all, today I don't have anything special. I got some greens that I didn't make. Emma picked up for me at Abby's, and I got real uh, from yesterday for dinner. Um, got me a little, you know. My G. Hughes sugar free uh, barbecue sauce. Amber ate the barbecue sauce from yesterday. Now I will eat it, but I have this, so it's no need for me to eat that when I have this. And y'all already know my boy Frank's. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He in the house. He in the house. Special shout out to my cousin, uh, Vincent, my brothers, my brother Thomas, who don't have kids in his own, but he's been a blessing to me, been a great uncle, been just, just to my daughter. And uh, I thank him. And, you know, my cousin Vincent, uh, happy Father's Day to you, my Uncle Fred, happy Father's Day to you. My father has since gone on to glory, but I appreciate him for everything he's done in my life. Made me the person who I am today. So, I ain't been doing much another day. I did my devotional. Did a little spot cleaning. I woke up this morning. For some reason, my back was hurt. And so I got up and set up. I've been sitting up in the, in the living room. In the chair. And I was telling them because I was going to cook some cabbage. I said, I really don't feel like no cooking. And so she said, you want me to pick you up something? So I told her, yeah. And I ended up getting a veggie plate from um, from Abby's. And I ate, I had some broccoli rice casserole. It wasn't good, so I only ate a little of that. And I had some of that spicy broccoli, so I ate that a little earlier. Around two. And I got two orders of the greens. And so, there's another order in there of the greens. And she had went to Wendy to get the new strawberry frosty. 
And I was going to actually get one, so I told her to get me one of them little tiny cups because I wanted to try it. And uh, she got over there, and the machine uh, was out, so it must not have been meant for me to have it. So, I didn't get it. Wish y'all cooking good in the neighborhood. I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday. I thought about going out to Millington to the air show, but I've been to many an air show. And I was just going to park, but I really would have liked to see the Blue Angels fly over to do that. I've been wanting to go see Layla Hathaway, and I see that she's going to be coming to um, this area. So I think I'm going to get some tickets. That's going to be my birthday treat to myself. Of course, I think it's in October, so my birthday in August, but I think that's going to be my birthday gift to myself to go see her live. I asked my daughter, was she trying to go see Mary J. Blige? She said no. They wanted to go to Vegas to see Usher. And she said, Mama, those tickets are so high. I said, yeah, then you got to think about, because I want to actually see him myself, but you got to think about the tickets to go see him. Then you got to think about your hotel. You got to think about your flight. It's just almost too expensive now. Because uh, I think these airlines, the tickets are so high, they make it up for lost time. And then they have a shortage of pilots, of course, so. They overbooking flights and everything else. So they say now if you you willing to do, you know, forego your flight and take a chance, you can get all kind of deals, you know, if you give up your seat. Well, who wanna do that? Not I. And where where I go, I'm gonna drive anyway, right now. So the guy came the other day. And I signed a contract for my fence. So he said it should be a couple of weeks. So next time we got to put me in a lineup and uh, get me done. But it's only going to take two days once they get started. So uh, it'll be the next couple of weeks I should have my fence up. So I'm on, I think I'll feel a little bit better. I did, Like I said, I didn't want to spend the money. But it is what it is. You know, I wasn't ready to really make this purchase and... I did the two year <clears throat> no interest. But that's still a significant amount of money a month that I gotta cut off. So I've been trying to over there writing and rewriting and trying to rework my budget, my monthly budget for the month to see where that payment is gonna materialize and come out of thin air from. <laughs> I know for myself, my budget is pretty tight. And I stick with it pretty close. So, that's going to knock me out doing some things. Unless I come up with some extra money. Isn't it something how, just something, one little thing in a monkey wrench will throw a monkey wrench in your plans. Or, but you can't let that get to you. Y'all. I spent some significant time talking to someone yesterday and they were talking about their relationship. And so as I was listening, what I will say is you want somebody in your life that's going to tell you the truth. If you, if they love you, they're going to be honest with you and they're going to tell you the truth. So this person told me they did something that they knew was wrong because they was upset and they were pissed as they said, they were upset with the person that they were in a relationship with. And so my question to them was, why? Why did you do this? Why were you doing this? Because first of all, and what they did, you know, they responded to someone that's interested in them. Well, why? Because if the shoe was on the other foot and you found that the person that you were, whether, you, whether they were mad or not, responded to somebody that was interested in them, how would you feel? Well, I would be upset. Okay. What I will tell you is this. Don't ever do, if you're in a relationship, first of all, messing or talking to someone else is not going to solve the problem that you have in your relationship with somebody else. You have to learn how to communicate with the person you with because y'all are the only two that can fix that relationship. 
And what you do is now you involve, whether it goes anywhere or not, innocent, because now it's, you don't respond to a person, they think you're interested in them. You involved an innocent person that didn't have anything to do with your mess in your mess. Because say something go down, this person don't know you in a relationship from Adam. And your person reach out to them. You don't know, because people just seem like they're off kilter. They always want to blame the other person when somebody, uh, when the person cheats on them. And that's what I'm saying. Married people, people in a relationship, this is for you. Be in your relationship. Leave single people alone. Whether you miserable, whether you happy, leave them in their own world, mind their own business. If they come at you, say no. But do not seek them. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. They in their mind their own business. It's a thing I'm married. I'm in a relationship. I mean it. If you want to be out here doing your dirt, do it. But get single before you start. Don't be trying to have your cake and eat it too. And if I don't tell you, I, I see people. I always focus on them. Oh, these hot girls here, and these women don't want to do this, and these men ain't this, and these men ain't that. Guess what? It's plenty of good men out here. It's plenty of good women out here. You got to look at yourself. If that, But the problem is, let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is not them. The problem is you. The problem is not the fact that just because I know it's some slow men out here don't mean I also know there's not some good men out here. But when slow come my way, I'm sending it back because I don't want it. No, thank you. I signed up for a steak. I didn't want slow. No, thank you. It's a such word as no thank you. But what you do is you get, you go by our appearance. And what I had to realize, I had someone tell me, I knew you were a good woman. I knew this. I knew you would make a good wife. I knew this about you. I knew you knew all this about me. But you still chose differently at the end of the day, and then you're sorry about your choice. Because I wasn't ecstatic, ecstatically what you wanted. I'm not going to change myself to fit your mold of what you want. Because I love me, and I was satisfied with who I was then. And I'm still satisfied with who I am now. So if I'm not what you're looking for, appearance-wise, then oh well. And that's what happens is you so people get so busy caught up on the outside. And I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but plenty of me in love, big women. I have not been skinny in my life. So plenty, when I was younger, but plenty of me in love, big women. So I mean, I wasn't ever worried about that. So I never felt like I had to shrink down myself or come back myself down to, to be somebody else's thing. For you to choose me, for me to be your preference. And I'm not your pre preference, move on. Move on. But that's what happens with a lot of women and a lot of men. You so focus on my type. That's just my type. This he he not my type or she not my type. You miss out on a pure heart, a good person that'll love you, that'll treat you right. And that ain't no bad looking person. But you so busy caught up into. That's why so many of these women out here, just be honest. They think that's what men want. Because that's what men are on Instagram checking for. The ones with the BBLs, the ones with what this, this bottles and all that. That's why they constantly signing up for those surgeries. But it's not about that at the end of the day, because at the end of the day they get that and they realize they've got all this stuff done in them cosmetically. But you're missing something on the inside trying to catch the bait. And you the bad B, so to speak. And that's for men too. And then you realize, you know, you with somebody who you thought just for looks, you know, got with, they didn't have no good intentions and they ain't not, not worth the darn. I'm telling you, y'all better start looking at people inner size and, and, and you miss out on some good women worried about what somebody else uh, want, want them to look like. They want to look like this and they want to look like that. But then once you do get them like that, you want them to sit down somewhere and cover up. 
And they ready to show off all that surgery they done got. I'm not being funny. Stop focusing on the wrong thing. When you focus on the wrong thing, you're going to get the wrong thing. And to that said, I heard on the radio the other day. And I said, that's sad they have to say that. In regards to those BBLs, in Florida, they said that somebody said it would be a line, a line out the door for those surgeries in Florida, right? Well, apparently they have limited them now to doing only three procedures a day. I'm like, well, how many were they doing before? And apparently they've lost lives in those, you know, like I told you, surgery is dangerous, period. Oh. There's been some lives lost. With those surgeries. That was really good, child. I enjoyed it anyway. I wasn't sure I could eat two real bones, but I actually could have. Anyway. That's enough of that. Again, I'm going to get off here. I wasn't going to tell y'all long today, but I'm glad y'all stopped. I just want to kind of stop in and tell you all the fathers. Happy Father's Day and wish everyone else a happy Sunday. And of course, you know, I thank y'all for joining me. As always, I love and appreciate you because you could go somewhere else and watch someone else's channel. I want you to know you're loved. I love you, but God truly loves you the most. Remember to always be kind to yourself and others. Be joyful and be blessed. Love y'all. Have a good Sunday and enjoy your week. Start it out with great, intentional joy on purpose. Love you. I'll see y'all next week for the weekly word and definitely a meal in the chat. Bye.